Today, I'll share with you how I made my potentiometer controlled toy phonograph. I had all kinds of ideas for this one with turning mechanical energy into some sort of audio sound uh, energy. And <laughs> I started off with just that basic idea and then I realized that I was talking about the phonograph in some sense. So I drew that out and then I thought about also making the uh, the vinyl record spin using some gears um, instead of a motor just like as you spin the potentiometer that there would be a gear so I drew that out all different ideas for that on the right I ended up not implementing this part and I'll explain that later so what I did first was just hook up the potentiometer to the breadboard and ensure that worked before moving on then I added a speaker or a little piezo buzzer I wrote code such that as you turned the potentiometer and the value increased, the frequency value coming from the speaker also increased. I had to do a little bit of math here to figure this out. The question that I needed to ask here was how much turning of the potentiometer would allow a frequency change. For every X amount of turning of the potentiometer, there should be a Y amount of frequency increase. And I wanted this increase to be distributed linearly or the same amount of increase uh, for each step. I learned from the serial print that the potentiometer ranges from zero to 1023. And I also know that there's 12 notes in the chromatic scale. So I divided 1023 divided by 12 notes and you get 85.25. So one potentiometer turn is equal to 12 smaller turns of 85.25. I wanted to make this an integer so that it was easier for processing and I rounded down to about 84. This was close enough for our purposes. So every 84 units of turning of the potentiometer should be associated with the next note in the chromatic scale. Next was the crafting of the physical apparatus. I looked for different things to use for a funnel to create the, the horn portion of this and ended up realizing the best thing to use was a coke bottle. Even though I don't drink coke, I ended up just <laughs> dumping it out. It had the best shape out of all of the soda bottles I could find. So I, I cut that out and made a hole for that in the box. I also made a hole in the side of the box that the potentiometer would stick through so that the user would be able to turn. I also utilized the cap of the pop bottle as a little holder for the speaker, which you'll see come together in a little bit. I sanded down the pop bottle just so that the uh, yellow or gold acrylic paint would stick better. Otherwise, on that kind of surface, it just doesn't stick, it just kind of slides everywhere. things to make my creations, I just collect them. I see stuff on clearance at Joanne Fabrics, or some of the stuff I don't even know. I just have a big jar of them, and that's a lot of where I get my inspiration from, is finding these spools and other things. And that's why I started to make these gears. I thought that they would be a really cool way to make gears out of cardboard and these wood discs that I found. I'm not sure where they come came from, but they were in my jar, um, so I was cutting them out of the cardboard for for that and then I thought I would maybe try to make a hole through these uh, wooden ones that I had uh, so that I could make an axle but that didn't work okay number one so I decided gears were something I would practice in maybe a different project. And with the last remaining disc I had that wasn't broken, I painted a record out of it to be used uh, aesthetically. Then I started gluing all of the components into the box and together that I painted.
The potentiometer was pretty tricky because it's tiny, so I glued one side of it to the inner side of the box and then just popped the part that twists onto the outside. So that outside part never actually got glued on, only the inside part. What did get glued on was the spool to make a more ergonomic knob for it. And then, like I said, it just got kind of stuck on there, so the uh, cardboard box was a barrier between the two. I found this neat gold paper clip in my jar of trinkets, so I added that as well, glued on the horn and then the record. Lastly, I wired up everything into the box I had already tested on the breadboard.